Hi, it's Mark Bernard here from the Bernard Institute for Cybersecurity Excellence. And today I'm going to talk about efficient and effective compliance management using ISO 27001 Information Security Management System. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about the General Data Protection Regulation and how ISO 27001 can't possibly help resolve this compliance concern. Well, I would just like to remind people that GDPR is in fact a legal obligation. It's a regulatory obligation, which has no management system. And it has many, many different facets that need to be addressed through a formal compliance management process. So we have architecture, as you can see, number one, audit, breach protocol, business plans, data classification, defined terms, we've got 73% is over is about governance and the management uh, overseeing this process human resources three percent information handling is important the legal aspect actually only accounts for six percent of compliance for the gdpr there's risk management policies of course need to be written procedures need to be written as well and people need to be trained on them that represents 23 percent then there's standards 10 percent and of course the scope needs to be defined uh, what the GDPR applies to once you've gone through some uh, general risk assessments and privacy impact assessments. As you can see here on the risk universe, uh, there are five different groups of risks, financial risks, strategic risks, hazard risk, compliance risk, and operational risk. The GDPR is a compliance risk is issue for the board of directors, and, uh, and, but we need to operationalize it. And that's where the ISO 27001 comes into play. There are basically six assets that are required to uh, deliver any kind of product or service. That includes humans or people, information, facilities, software, hardware, and, and telecoms or telecommunications. And that's to deliver products and services. This is a map of Annex A uh, against those assets uh, where there are risks. Uh, specific to those assets. GDPR can't do that on its own. Now, uh, a self-sustaining compliance framework requires a management system with a scope. And they conduct privacy impact assessments. Compri uh, pri pri privacy impact assessment is only used to measure compliance with legislation. A risk assessment is actually used to measure the risk of not complying with legislation or what assets might be exposed to it. I've created this flow chart. You can see it maps to page five, page six. So hold on here. You'll see that we have this all mapped out. Um, if, if you do a privacy impact alone, you check compliance with governance policy and audits, for instance, and then you create a PIA report and then jump right into corrective and preventive action plans, you could end up uh, creating a huge um, uh, expense for the organization. It could be millions of dollars, in fact. This is not the right, right way to do this. Now, the right way to do this is to do it as follows. You do a privacy impact assessment and you check against compliance with legislation against what you're doing. And then you write the report and then you hand it off to P7. And P7 is coming up. In addition, uh, you can do a risk assessment. The risk assessment checks the scope, assets, vulnerabilities, threats, existing controls, and comes up with a risk rating. This also goes to P7. P7 here, you can see underneath the logo, the PIA report, the RA report is handed to the governance committee. They have a risk management policy with a risk appetite defined within it so they know how to handle risks. The governance committee and the manager who's responsible, it could be the ISMS manager for instance, will check against uh, legal obligations and approve risk management controls and determine uh, how the policy should be applied. If there is a, a, some sort of a gap and a risk needs to be addressed, then a risk treatment plan will be created. That goes over to page eight. If it's a continual improvement exercise, that will go to page nine. On page eight, we have um, a risk rating of 80 or greater. The risk treatment plan gets uh, created and updated. And this is a risk treatment plan. This is like a dashboard for management to review uh, as part of the governance exercise. Again, this type of information is not listed in GDPR. So the people who say that you can't use 
ISO 27001 to, uh, to comply with GDPR don't actually know what they need to do, to be honest. They're probably uh, a bunch of lawyers who want to make a lot of money from GDPR. So don't listen to them. Listen to me because I know I've done this many times before. On page 9, uh, you have a risk rating of 79 or lower. So in the risk management policy that we talked about before, these are things that can go into the continual improvement plan. And there's a roadmap for that process. Uh, and then you can uh, you know, basically plan these out, get a budget for it, uh, take corrective and preventive action plans. If there are any major risks to compliance with GDPR, they would have been addressed through the risk treatment plan and corrective and preventive action plans. The, uh, in addition, uh, you should know that there are a lot of other frameworks out there that don't have management systems. So GDPR is not the only one. SOC 2, NIST, High Tech, ITAR, FedRAMP, PCI, uh, and on and on the list goes. None of these have any kind of management system. They all cost a lot of money to implement as standalone compliance projects. You can see GDPR right here. In some cases, it's over a million dollars to implement. However, the ISMS cost is much lower. If you use the ISMS as a management system and you can map the controls into the ISMS, into that uh, approved control list that I talked to you about with the policies and procedures and standards, then you can deal with this. And you can see the budget at the bottom here or the total expense for compliance with all of these is over $4 million. However, if you do it through the ISMS, it's uh, 493000 So it's much, much cheaper. The benefits, ISMS complies with all GDPR and consumer protection regulations, puts top management in control, not external lawyers, not external uh, consultants. It's the management team who's responsible for running the company. If the company fails, it's that management team who can be fired. Okay, so it's their responsibility. Um, it establishes an, an irrefutable process to manage external advisory services to keep them in check because risk assessments and privacy impact assessments get fed into the governance committee. Demonstrates top management's fiduciary responsibilities and standard of care based on a quality management system. Quality management systems are approved by hundreds of thousands of organizations around the world. They're used every day and it's self-sustainable. Helps to control operational costs uh, by evaluating uh, proposed controls against approved lists. More efficient, more effective compliance program eliminates non-compliance reports. Supersedes governance, risk, and compliance uh, uh, you know, GRC has been around for a few years now. It's time for it to go away because the ISO 27001 supersedes all of that. ISO is more flexible, scalable solution. The only cybersecurity program with management system that can be independently certified, as I pointed out before, evidence-based system provides evidence that will pass any RFP, customer, or regulatory audit. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I hope that you uh, gain some knowledge from this. And if you have any questions, Please uh, call me or drop me a line and I'd be happy to chat with you. Take care now and have a great day.